I want to thank everyone who has decided to subscribe and follow along with this portfolio. Today I'm going to thoroughly cover my positions in my largest account and disclose my thoughts about certain companies and funds. This portfolio is made up of various stocks and ETFs that have shown consistency in growing and paying dividends. The few funds I own are intended to create cash flow for the portfolio that I can then reinvest into positions I believe are undervalued. This portfolio is in the early stages of being developed so some of the major positions are somewhat defensive, especially since market conditions are unpredictable. The first company I'll discuss is Algonquin Power and Utilities. I have recently reached the 100 share mark, making this position one of my largest in the portfolio at about $1,900. Algonquin Power has shown to be steady in growing revenue and can maintain a decent price to book ratio of about 1.9. During the recent run-up of Algonquin Power, we see the PE is over 35. So it looks to be overvalued at these prices, but due to their steady growth, I am not a seller at these levels. Another larger position is the Bank of Nova Scotia. I believe it was an undervalued bank compared to the industry leaders of Royal Bank and TD. Bank of Nova Scotia has decent multiples and can continue to grow their dividend with the finance sector. I'm interested in seeing how rising interest rates affect the balance sheet and the products Bank of Nova Scotia offers over the next 12 months. BTCY is a fund I recently purchased as a cash flow play. Since crypto is so volatile, premiums on selling cover calls can be very profitable, especially since the crypto space is so new. Now the fund I chose to allocate a small portion of my funds is the ETHY, which also sells cover calls but with Ethereum. I do consider both of these high risk plays, but if the crypto market continues as it has been doing, getting extra cash to reinvest into core holdings can be very beneficial. So together, I've only allocated about $100 per fund to this space. The only speculative play I've made is in Cielo Waste Solutions. This company aims to provide a solution to waste by producing biodiesel from unused materials like plastics and woods. There was a lot of hype surrounding this company in the past and just recently consolidated to under 50 cents. I believe there is a place in the market for Cielo but only time will tell as they fine tune their processes and build a larger clientele. Enbridge has been doing extremely well over the last month or so due to the pressures Western sanctions have put on some commodity markets. At these levels, Enbridge is likely overvalued, but I continue to hold to receive their quarterly dividend payments. The main concern I have with Enbridge is the amount of debt they carry, and with no sign of reducing it. They have historically had a large payout ratio, and today it is over 100%, so they are borrowing money to pay investors. I will be more bullish if they slow their dividend growth rate to focus on paying down debt. Paired with Enbridge is ENS, the eSplit Corp, which focuses on selling cover calls on Enbridge. By doing this, they can receive the dividends Enbridge pays and also premiums for selling the contracts. The premiums they receive increases their yield. This fund pays $0.10 cents a month per share, but I only use it to create cash to reinvest in other areas of the market. Overexposure in these types of funds, I believe, is dangerous and can eat into profits over time. Similar to the eSplit Corp, FLI also sells cover calls and for this reason is a high yielding fund. There's nothing much more than that to this position as it is only a cash flow play. One of my personal favorites is Fortis. They are in the electrical distribution industry and is a major company with infrastructure and contracts that lowers the cost and likelihood of them being profitable. Despite being a fairly defensive stock, Fortis does look to expand their market to other areas with Fortis Life Sciences. The difference maker for me is their vision to make a sustainable future. It seems they believe they can create a future where we can still maintain our way of living while also being environmentally cautious. Their carbon emission goals are important in being considered a renewable energy company as well as a mature utility giant. Go Easy has been a very interesting company over the last year or so. They are a financial company that is involved in private loans and mortgages. They distinguished themselves in a low interest rate environment and was able to be very profitable. Recently, investors have flocked away from this stock due to the upcoming interest rate hikes, but I believe they should be able to maintain their market share in the lending business. The most recent company I have purchased is the Great West Life Company. Being beaten down over the last month due to global tension, I thought it was the right time to enter a position. When I look 25 years in the future, I think about what industries are a must. I believe, like energy distribution, insurance could be one of those industries that will be around forever. The parent company of the Great West Life Company is Power Corporation. They deal in wealth management, insurance, and fintech. They are also the owners of our own Wealth Simple. I believe PowerCorp's business model is sustainable and diverse and allows for long-term cash flow. The only telecommunication company I own is TELUS. 
With their TV, mobile, and internet business, they are beginning to gain market share in the security business. Many people I know have already gotten the upgraded telesecurity plan. Paired with their existing business as an internet provider, I believe they are entering a new space most telecoms haven't touched yet. When I am not clear what to invest in, I choose to look at a fairly broad ETF that also matches my own portfolio goals. Vanguard's High Dividend Yield Index ETF holds some of the companies I already own, but with a broader take on commodity and financial companies. To learn more about VDY, check out my VDY review where I discuss their holdings and distributions. The last position position I'll cover is the US Cover Call ETF. Its past performance is promising and continues to pay consistent monthly distributions. I choose to put my money into an ETF like this rather than ENS or FLI or any other crypto fund due to the nature of the US market. Over the last decade, US companies have outperformed many other spaces and potentially could be overvalued at this time. I choose to hedge my positions by selling covered calls to increase cash flow in the short term. It probably won't be the best in total returns, but I think it does lower variance and guarantees at least some compounding potential. So that wraps up the comprehensive overview of my TFSA portfolio. You can see I have included many individual stocks and ETFs to help grow cash and preserve long-term capital. I take a risk-adjusted approach unlike other investors and think for the long-term to secure gains. If you want to follow along with this portfolio and watch in full transparency the ins and outs of investing, like and subscribe to keep up to date.